This new Mario Party, I'm loving it. Nintendo went from, in my opinion, the worst Mario Party game in the series to one of the best. And while it's definitely not perfect, Mario Party Superstars has so much that I enjoy that I compiled a list of 10 different things for this video. Some of these things are pretty obvious, like the game actually has online play and it works, which unfortunately is a bit of a shocker for Nintendo games. But while some of the things on this list are obvious, some of them might not be. In fact, even if you've been playing the game, you might not have noticed some of the things on this list, but once I point them out, they'll make you enjoy the game that much more. And as I said earlier, this game is not perfect. In fact, I got another list of 10 things I don't really like about this game that much, and I could always make that a sequel video to this, so hit that subscribe button and the bell, I think, so you get notified for the next one. With that out of the way, let's get into the 10 things I absolutely love about Mario Party Superstar. Alright, so the first thing I want to talk about today is the better boards. Now, not only did we get more boards in this game than Super Mario Party, we only have five in this game, but hey, I mean, it's better than the four in Super. This game has just objectively better boards. Now, I don't want to give ND Cube too much credit here, unfortunately, because obviously these are boards from past games, so it's not like they designed these, but they did make some nice updates to the boards from the N64 counterparts, and overall, these boards are fantastic. They all feel different and unique, which is something we were missing in Super Mario Party where the boards kind of just blended together and the only thing different about them were the graphics and the art style that the boards went with. These actually feel like completely different gameplay experiences. I mean, if you're playing, you know, go from playing the Peach's Birthday Cake one to the Bowser's Space one, it feels like a different game. They might as well be, you know, you, you might as well be switching between Mario Party 2 and Mario Party 8. It's just they feel completely different in the way that you play the games and it just makes this game have so much more variety. The better boards are an absolute plus. Nintendo really killed it with this one. For the second thing on this list, I want to talk about achievements. Now, I know this is a pretty sad thing to admit, but I do sometimes play Mario Party by myself. I don't think I've ever sounded more pathetic to myself in my life than just admitting that out loud, but sometimes when I'm bored, I'll pop it on. I mean, it's a fun game you can play, just listen to a podcast or something, just play against the computers, occasionally, you know, throw your controller out of just pure unbridled rage at the Birdo CPU who's only set to hard, but is somehow the greatest player to ever play the game. Anyway, these achievements are not just a good thing for single player gamers though because obviously they give you, you know, something to work towards, but it's fun because if you and, you know, a bunch of friends are going to play the game for a bunch of time, it, it's just nice to be able to kind of track your progress in this sense. It's a cool thing, another thing to, you know, play the game because this game is obviously lacking a major story mode, so it's nice to be able to kind of, you know, have this sort of track your progress even though it's not, you know, it doesn't track everything, but it tracks the achievements that they have and they have a fair amount of achievements, so it works in that regard. Next thing I want to bring up is the options for the mini games. Now, I didn't even know that this was in the game until I played the game, but Nintendo actually lets you choose which mini games you want to play before you start. Now, of course, you don't get to go through every single mini game and pick which ones you want to be on and off. That would be too cool. I don't know how that hasn't been implemented in any Mario Party, but it just hasn't yet. But they did do a nice job of separating the mini games into skill based mini games, ones from the N64, ones from the GameCube. They have a nice assortment of categories that allow you to kind of pick which mini games you want to play, and it's just a great way to choose that. I mean, it's nice to be able to narrow it down in case you like hate certain mini games and just don't want to play them. You don't have to. Next up, I want to talk about hidden blocks. Now, hidden blocks in Mario Party have been a thing all the way back since I believe Mario Party 2. However, more recently in Super Mario Party, they would give you a star and they were everywhere. I feel like I got like one or two stars per game from hidden blocks, which is just ridiculously random and not fun at all. Mario Party is all about being random, right? So in some sense, I don't really want to complain about it randomly handing out stars. But as I talked about in my 30 minute video analysis on why Super Mario Party is so bad, there's a fine balance between fun random and bad random and Super Mario Party and the hidden blocks were just completely in the bad random like you did not it, it was just so dumb hidden blocks are still in this game but they don't give you a star and that makes them perfect it actually boosts them right into that perfect random sense because now when you get a hidden block hey it just gives you a couple extra coins the online works that's all I gotta say next thing I want to talk about is the mini games these mini games are all from past titles and to be honest, I think this is the best collection of mini games we've ever had. I think it's even better than Mario Party the Top 100, which is kind of funny because those were supposed to be the Top 100 mini games. I like this collection better. I think this is by far the best collection of mini games we've ever had in the series. If I could say one thing, I'd say more mini games from Mario Party 8 because I love Mario Party 8, but that's also me just being biased. Overall, great job picking the mini games, great job remastering the mini games, just knocked it out of the park with the mini games. Alright, next up we have items. The items in this game are not overpowered. 
They're good, but they're not OP. They're game-breaking, but not consistently game-breaking. You can occasionally get an item that just breaks the game, but that's not a reoccurring thing. That doesn't happen every single turn, every single game, which is the case in Super Mario Party and some other Mario Party games I've played, but mainly Super Mario Party. The items were way too cheap, and they would just break the game. You could farm golden pipes. There was just no fun in that. This game does not have that same problem. The golden pipes are there, but they're only in certain boards, to my knowledge, and also, they're not really as broken because they're double the price of the star now instead of just the price of the star. On top of that, there's a lot more kind of average items that do well. Obviously, they're not bad at all. They're really good, but they're not like game-breakingly good. I just think the items in this game, they kind of nailed it, the balancing-wise, because they were not good before, and now they are. Daily challenges. This is something I talked about years ago wanting to see in specifically Mario Party. I don't know why I've been infatuated with this idea, but it's super cool. Next up is the shop. This game has a shop with a bunch of different items you can buy. These range from emotes, which are hilarious, I love the emotes in this game, just a great addition, to music tracks, which, I mean, cool, whatever, to customizing your party card, or whatever it's called, and that's pretty cool too. The shop adds a lot of replayability, I like it, it's cool. I, not too much else to say about it, it's just a great addition, I'm glad they added it in. Last but not least, this is a little bit of a weird one, but I think the economy in this game is better than Super Mario Party. Now, don't get me wrong, the economy is not perfect. It is still hyper inflated. There are way too many coins. Everyone has super, like, just a ridiculous amount of coins. But then at the same time, it's not really inflation, I guess, because the prices aren't as high as they should be. The prices are actually pretty low. I was playing a game with my boys earlier. Of course I won. I mean, it's just too easy. But by the end of the game, pretty much everyone had over 100 coins, and we were playing a 10 turn match on Peach's Birthday Cake. That is not, like, that is the shortest possible you could do. And I think everyone except for one person had over 100 coins and the one person had zero because I stole them all in a versus battle. Suck it, Andrew. So yeah, I don't think the economy is fixed. In fact, I don't think it's that good, but what it is, is volatile. In Super Mario Party, once you had a ton of coins, you could not lose those coins. It was damn near impossible to lose the coins. You could spend them, but that's not the same as losing them. Once you had the coins, they were good. You could use them at stores, and there were very, very few opportunities for you to lose coins, and even when you did, it was only like 10 coins, and everyone had like 100, so that didn't matter at all. In this game, you can lose coins. The Bowser Space Board has this giant laser beam that absolutely brutalizes you, and while I'd love to see that go off more than like once or twice a game, it, it, it takes all your coins, so I mean, that's just awesome. As I mentioned earlier, in the versus spaces, you can wager as many coins as either you or your opponent has, so you could literally just completely bankrupt your opponent if you win. There are ways for you to lose all your coins in this game, so even if you get into a situation where you have over 100 coins, as almost everyone seems to at least once per match, you never feel totally safe, so while the economy is a bit busted, you never have that sense of security in Super Mario Party, and that sense of security is where the fact that, like, nothing really matters sets in, because then you stop trying on the minigames, because why do you need coins for, you know, beating the minigame? It's just terrible. You don't have that feeling in Mario Party Superstars, and therefore, it's just a lot better. So those are the 10 things I enjoy about Mario Party Superstars. Make sure to hit the subscribe button so you can see the 10 things I don't like. Keep in mind, when that video comes out, it's probably gonna get a bunch of dislikes. I really do enjoy this game. I would give it an 8 out of 10 so far. It's probably gonna bump up to a 9 if I keep playing it and keep enjoying it. But, as I said, it's it's not perfect, and I got 10 things I don't like, so I'm gonna make a video about that. Like the video if you did enjoy, subscribe if you're new, type out one of those comments if you think I'm wrong, type out one of those comments if you think I'm right. It's about 3am right now and I got an 8am class in the morning, so I'm about to sign off. See you guys. Peace.